Thank you for thank you for showing up to the 2013 Keene pre-primary city council candidates forum. I would like to thank the candidates who have shown up for attending. I'd also like to thank those in the audience for coming out and those watching on Cheshire TV for watching. Uh, we will start off with each candidate getting a two minute opening statement and we will begin with Ian Freeman. Uh, yeah, I'm Ian Freeman, uh, running for city council at large 2013. The primary uh, election is, so is it September 8th? September October 8th. 8th. Sorry, October 8th. It's September right now. Uh, October 8th, and uh, hope that you will come out because it's important. There will be one candidate uh, eliminated, and uh, hopefully you'll get a good idea of what some of the folks are uh, standing for here. Anyway, I stand for the ideas of liberty, and I want to bring those ideas to the city council uh, on a you know, consistent basis. Every now and then the council might do the right thing when it comes to freedom, but for the most part, uh, what I see coming from the Keene City Council, and uh, I think they're all fine folks, is, uh, is more government and more control, and uh, I don't think that's the direction that, uh, that we need to be going in uh, here in Keene. I think that we should try more freedom and see how that works on a variety of different issues. So hopefully we'll be able to cover some of those tonight. Uh, for, personally, I have a real problem with uh, victimless crimes being enforced in Keene. I was just out last night, and uh, Keene police officer Matt Griffin was on the streets, as he is every week, in the college area, not doing anything to break up fights or anything like that. I'm sure if he saw a fight, he would break it up. But mostly what his job is is to arrest young ladies for having a, a bottle of who knows what uh, in their hands as they walk down the street. And as far as I'm concerned, if they're not hurting anybody, they should be left alone. And it's really, it's, it's hard to see uh, young ladies being made to cry by keen police officers. And I see it literally every single week. So that's one example of a, what I would consider to be a victimless crime. There are a variety of others that are enforced here in Keene, but hopefully that's something that we can focus on. Um, I think I'm almost out of time. You've got about 15 seconds. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I am uh, Carl Jacobs. I am currently serving as an at-large city councilor, and, and I'm enjoying that service. Uh, I believe that government uh, plays an important role in uh, supporting the economy of the uh, city, and uh, part of that support has to do with the infrastructure of uh, roads and uh, schools and all these things that make a community uh, a good place to live and uh, make it possible for businesses to conduct their business. So uh, I also believe that we are challenged because our resources are limited, and uh, so as a city councilor, uh, we have to make some difficult decisions as to uh, how to allocate uh, the resources that we have, being mindful that uh, taxpayers are also challenged. But uh, I think in the long run, we have to invest in uh, those uh, infrastructures in order to be able to ensure that uh, we will have a viable uh, business and uh, residential community going forward. Hello, my name's um, Chris Roberts. I'm um, at Lodge City Council. I'm running for my fourth term at, at Lodge. And I enjoy being at Lodge because at Lodge, you're not beholden just to one ward. You have to look at everything in um, the city. And over and over again, there are certain things that benefit certain wards, but may not be in the best interest of the city. And so, being at large, it also makes it, it, it kind of tough because you have to appeal to everybody in the city and sometimes what's best for the city is going to tick off um, a lot of people. I'm also on the school board in the city and the state house and on the county delegation and sometimes it gets really frustrating because they always don't work together. Sometimes they actually work against each other but being on those, I bring a different level of knowledge, and a lot of times that knowledge is quite frustrating because people don't always want to listen, but I try my best and I try to make independent decisions based on the subject at hand. My name is Bob Sutherland. I am running also for uh, at-large uh, candidacy for city council. This is my third run for office, hopefully third time's a charm. 
And uh, I am running on the same principles that I've run all along, and that is uh, trying to look for areas where we can cut spending, where we can uh, outsource as necessary, and where we can consolidate uh, services and focus on the needs of the constituents. Um, I feel that the city council, there are a number of uh, representatives who through the years have uh, maintained similar positions and have been challenged in trying to get those positions established, uh, being that there are a lot of other city councilors who have nodded along and voted along for just about every spending uh, opportunity available to them. So. Uh, just pointing out the fact that since the downturn in the economy, uh, the city has increased spending by approximately 11 percent. Uh, it now stands at about uh, 27 million dollars, I believe, 20, 25 million dollars. Um, we have a total debt of about 27 million dollars, and I'm running on goals to set fiscal priorities for the city, to lower taxes, and set goals for lower taxes, to uh, lower spending, and set goals for spending cuts and to um, pay down the debt. Uh, I think it's, uh, it would be a nice goal to have the debt paid off in 10 years and have Keene uh, completely free of debt so that we can focus our, our spending in the appropriate manner and stop borrowing money. Hold on, Mr. Sutherland, hold on to the mic. So what we'll do is, instead of you sending the mic down this way, is do what they call the snake format. Got it. So you'll answer one question, then you will get the next. Uh, so we'll start with you. I have five questions from the moderator, and then we will take questions from the audience after that. And if we have time, I will allow the candidates to ask one another questions. Uh, each candidate will be allowed to ask a total of three questions. So first question, Mr. Sutherland, as a candidate, what are your top, top priorities? First of all, before we get started, I'm wondering if you could introduce yourself as the moderator. So oh, we yes, understand, Cer we certainly. Have an understanding uh, as to what you're, wh how you position yourself as being moderate, and these questions are fair. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I am uh, Daryl W. Perry. I'm a candidate for mayor, and I'm also a co-chair of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. The NHLP is the official sponsor of this event. Okay, so these questions will be liberty focused. Is that correct? Uh, somewhat, but not necessarily. Okay, thank you. Okay, so your first question was, what are the priorities for the city? I think I stated in my What are your list. top priorities as a candidate? Top priority as a candidate uh, is to, as I said in my opening, to focus the city on uh, establishing spending goals that are lower than current. We currently have a five or six year plan uh, set in place, including capital improvements and estimated uh, annual growth on the operating budget that uh, intends to continue to increase spending and, con and intends to continue to increase taxes. So the, the first priority is to set goals for lower spending. The second thing, there are numerous other issues relative to you know, it, different areas of interest to different parties within the city. There, there are a lot of people who are concerned about the flooding. I've been concerned along, all along about the flooding relative to the, the city projects that has forced more stormwater down into Beaver Brook and into the Ashwillet River. Um, I think the city needs to take more responsibility for those projects and, and take more time to study the impact of their, of their decisions. Third is I think that for a lot of the uh, spending projects, the capital improvement projects that we've done in the city, there's been a focus on uh, beautification. I think we've waste, wasted millions, and I can point to millions where it has been wasted, particularly on Main Street roundabout, which should have cost about a fourth of what the total project cost was. Um, there is an issue about parking. The city continues to develop uh, city projects, but leaves parking as an afterthought. Uh, I have lived in this city for nine years, and the parking situation continues to get worse. Uh, the city has done nothing to, to establish or, or even follow through with their, their stated city plan to have less surface parking and has failed to, to establish a parking strategy that would include a, a multiple uh, deck parking facility. We have uh, a broad expanse of land uh, adjacent to uh, Audrey's Cafe, and I think it would be an ideal p place for a uh, parking structure. I think we could even offer a, a land swap with Audrey's and maybe some money to move Audrey's Time. to where. You can finish your sentence. 
the skate park is currently. And that would be able to uh, uh, allow the city to build a, a, a substantial parking structure. But I think we also ought to consider about outsourcing things like parking and other services where we can cut spending. Thank you. Chris Roberts, you have two minutes. One of the, the, the problems that the city and the school board is, is facing right now this year, we'll be spending $3 million more than four years ago just on the state retirement fund because the state was um, spending, I think it was 30% the state was supposed to match. And both under Democrat and Republican leadership, what they did was to help balance the state budget was to do away with the state's money. And so basically the king taxpayers are paying $3 million extra this year and getting nothing in return. And <clears throat> my goal is one, right now, Keen is fluctuating from one, two, or three as the highest tax rate in the state. It cannot support that tax rate because we have more and more people moving out of Keene because of that high tax rate. We have people who don't want to move in Keene because of that high tax rate. One of the things that are happening right now is people are moving into Surrey, Winchester, and Chesterfield, and other communities just so that they can spend, send their kids to get a keen education, which means they just send a tuition check and they don't have any overhead, no retirement whatsoever. So the people are keen are picking up those extra costs. And so we need a way to <clears throat> decrease the amount of um, spending that we're doing. We just have to. Yes, we have to look at the flooding. We have to look at a number of other areas. Yes, you're right. Does beautification of downtown more important than the continual damage of the flooding? We've had three serious flooding episodes already this year, and anybody who knows, the first 5,000, even if you have insurance, is out of your own pocket. So the people of Keene, especially the homeowners, are suffering seriously. Thank you. Mr. Jacobs, two minutes. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, my priorities, uh, I think, first is, uh, as I mentioned before, try and find that balance between uh, maintaining the uh, climate for uh, jobs. I think we have some opportunities with uh, the Marlboro Street uh, area and the work that's being done to come up with a plan for that area and thinking about the Kingsbury property and some other properties on Marlboro Street. Uh, there may be opportunities there uh, for uh, businesses to come in that would have jobs and would help the economy. Uh, people would uh, be paying taxes. Uh, I think uh, a second area that I'm interested in uh, is planning. I think we don't just live in this moment. I think uh, we need to be concerned about uh, how we're going to be uh, maintaining and spending money uh, in the future and what uh, programs and uh, services uh, may be needed uh, going forward. And I think that's a, an important part of uh, what a city councilor does. And, and the third thing, uh, this may seem silly, but um, well, I don't take it as silly, that uh, as a city councilor, I, I try to rep be a representative of the council at various community events. Uh, and I do take the time to do that. Uh, that's part of why I'm here today, because I, I take it seriously to, to be present as a, as a representative of the city. And uh, so those are, I guess, would be three things that I would say uh, that I want to uh, focus on. Or th those are, that's how I look at what the job of a city councilor is. Thank you. Mr. Freeman, two minutes. Uh, yeah, I share uh, many of the concerns as my co-candidates here, and I think taxes is, is, uh, is definitely one of them. I absolutely agree uh, that taxes are keeping people out of Keene, and they are encouraging people to leave Keene because it's hard to pay $6,000 a year for a regular house. I mean, if you got a larger than regular house, you're probably paying 10, 12, 15. Uh, that's, that's pretty significant. And what can be done about that? Well, how about, uh, because budget's always an issue. Government's always spending you know, more and more every year. The budgets always go up. It's like a, almost a guarantee. If you have a government department, you're almost guaranteed next year to have either the same amount or more uh, money for your department. And that there's no uh, incentive when it comes to the people that are working for the state to be efficient. And that's because they know they're gonna get the same budget next year. Why should they be efficient? In fact, if they spend more than their budget, they'll probably get more next year. So it kind of, it's almost a perverse 
uh, version of the way business operates. You know, business, if you're not within your budget, you're in trouble. You might have to, have to shut down, but government just gets to take as much as they want. So what if uh, Keene were to transition into a voluntary city, meaning that the taxes would no longer be backed by the threat of violence, which of course they are today. If you don't pay property taxes, men with guns are going to take you from your home, most likely, because the city will claim that it's theirs, and then they'll tax sale it uh, to somebody else. And that's really violent, and I don't want neighbors to be treated that way. So if city services are valuable, and I believe some of them are, fire protection, actual protection, roads, these are important things. Uh, if city services are valuable, then people should be able to pay for them on a voluntary basis. The idea, if you have to use force to make people pay for something, it's probably a bad idea. So operate consensually. Time. Mr. Freeman, next question is for you. If elected, would you introduce a proposal to eliminate the need for a primary for municipal elections? Why or why not? I really don't have any particular viewpoint on that. I don't see the primary as a bad thing. It's certainly true that, uh, that there's a, a real dearth of participation in local elections, so you could argue that the primary is completely unnecessary. It's certainly something that uh, that's, I think could be explored, it could be looked at. I, I can't say for sure that it would be uh, on the top of my list of things to do. Uh, I think the primary costs a fair amount of money and doesn't really